this Points of View series, we look to end each, uh, each of the four events in the series with a creative response to the artwork. We think one of the wonderful powers of art is not just to uh, stimulate recollections of knowledge forgotten or lead us to research or think about the world differently, but it's also to create uh, creative responses of our own and the ways in which uh, it brings our own imagination alive. And uh, the first week we, uh, we had a musical response, last week we had a poetic response, and uh, tonight we get to hear from the thinking person's folk ruffian. Uh, you may know Justin Hazelwood as the bedroom philosopher. He has the heart of a musician, uh, the brain of a comedian, and apparently the face of a hot female character actor. Um, a, a bio that maybe predates his facial hair, but maybe doesn't, I'm, I'm not sure. He's uh, going to respond creatively, but I would ask you um, to keep an eye out for Justin's book, which has just come out, called Fun Employed, and it's about what it is to work in the arts in Australia. It is an extraordinary uh, and very funny and insightful read, uh, and he's going to give you his own take on John Brack and on Collins Street, 5pm. Please make him very welcome. Thank you. I'd now like to perform a 10 minute rendition of Waltzing Matilda on these glasses. Um, sorry, uh, tough crowd. Okay, I was just looking at the painting and I don't know if there's any Mad Men fans uh, in the audience, but I think I recognize a grizzled Don Draper there on the left possibly Peggy lurking back there. I'm, I'm most perplexed by the brown balloon uh, floating there, sort of the surrealist edge. I wonder if John actually made some sort of mistake, and that's the uh, high art version of just scrubbing over it in texture and just going, ah, let the critics deal with that surrealist brown balloon. A bit of a history of Melbourne street names for you. You may not be aware of this, but most Melbourne streets uh, were named after musicians. Uh, King Street after Carol King, <laughs> of course, uh, Queen Street, that's pretty obvious. Uh, famous Co Collins Street after Phil Collins, <laughs> had a string of hits uh, dating back to the 50s, I believe. Uh, Phil Collins is quite, quite a short man, so uh, Little Collins Street. <laughs> This is th also thrown in there as well. Uh, Russell Street, Russell Morris, exhibition uh, after Madonna, actually. Uh, she's just always making an exhibition of herself. Um, my personal favourite would be Bjork Street. Uh, it's oh so quiet. Um, Especially the, uh, the corner of Björk and Swanston, uh, an ode to Björk's swan dress at the Oscars. I love swans. Thank you, David. Ah, Melbourne, the city of churches. By churches, I mean pubs. There's one on every corner. And there's a man in the corner of every pub. And he's looking out the corner of his eye. He's probably watching the football on a brand spanking new television set. He is set for life. Look out, who's that saucy piece who just crossed the room? Why, it's a four and twenty pie. <laughs> and it's being carried by an equally saucy piece. Yes, women in the workforce. Nurses, teachers, barmaids. They make up half our workers, and now they can buy their own makeup. What do you say, boys? When they learn to kick a footy fifty meters, we'll give them equal pay. Ah, Melbourne, four seasons in one day, most of them winter. <laughs> Time to rug up in the latest trench coat bought from Maya and made right here in Chinatown. 
This season, tan is the new gray. But don't stand in front of the Yarra, you'll disappear. <laughs> Melbourne, it's the Aboriginal word for not Sydney. <laughs> From the three-story high-rises of South North Melbourne to the slums of Northcote, it's a city on the move and has become the industrialization mecca of Australia. It's mecca all over as factories produce everything from car parts to bra clasps, and we still can't get them undone. <laughs> the hammer of industry is the beat of the Australian heart of hearts, pumping like Don Bradman riding far up into Gallipoli. <laughs> Who's this? A new flock of arrivals from Britain and Europe? Come in out of the cold, mateys. What's that in your luggage? Why, it's thousands of years of culture, including Jewish irony and Greek kebabs. Meat and three veg in a sandwich? Well, I'll be. A falafel, that'll have a fella full. Ah, yes, Melbourne, a sophisticated monocultural metropolis <laughs> with convenience stores now open from 7 till 11 in the morning. <laughs> it's bustling with culture. Take our cheeses, for example, state class. In the art barns, there's bush poets collaborating with skiffle bands to take music into the 20th century. What's that in the distance? Why, it's the back of Barry Humphreys. Someone better quarantine that fruit at the border. <laughs> We're shipping out all the troublemakers for next year's Olympic Games. Could sheep shearing be a demonstration event? That'll have the drovers flocking in droves. Or the hard work relay. Everyone lending in and pitching a hand. What about good old Victorian rules? Ron Barassi lights the flame with the flick of a smoko. The opening ceremony will feature that great Australian pastime, gum leaf blowing. In 50 years, it's predicted each household will have their own leaf blower. <laughs> Melbourne values its natives. There's an Aboriginal sitting next to the traditional owner of the land, shopkeeper Jim. <laughs> what time is it, asks Jim. Why, it's dream time, replies the black. Jim checks his watch. I reckon it's time to get back to work. Now pick up that broom and sweep your troubles under the carpet. Let's keep Victoria tidy. Melbourne's famous for its streetcars. The 1940s saw the reign of the infamous Lonsdale Five, who robbed banks and escaped on getaway trams. <laughs> Step on it, conductor. Follow that W class. <laughs> Next stop, the future, as engineers work on a bullet tram that will take passengers from the city to St Kilda in under 30 minutes. And now, here we are in Collins Street, where there's an art happening. Painter John Brack has asked 40 Melburnians to stand perfectly still during busy peak hour. <laughs> he says he'll pay him a shilling and sixpence. By golly, he's done it. Those workers look none too pleased. Still, it's Brack to the future. This portrait may well be an iconic record of the kind of self-conscious, fashionably conformist petulance Melburnians are famous for. As the lower classes from Clifton Hill might say, what are you looking at? <laughs> Indeed, what are we looking at? He is looking at you, Melbourne. Oh dear, we seem to have run out of music. 
Melbourne, it's like New York without the budget. <laughs> we raise our jagachinos and salute you. And the queen, keep your head down and your chin up and always wear a hat. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Justin. And thank you to all our speakers tonight, Kirsty Grant, Dr. Gary Preslin, Gideon Haig, Dr. Leslie Cannold, and Justin Hazelwood. Big round of applause for all of them. A big thank you. The, the water glasses aren't actually for, for playing, Justin. They're for the sport of watching each consecutive speaker go to have a drink and think, I don't know which one hasn't been touched. It's, it's very upsetting for all of them. Uh, look, uh, a big thank you to the NGV. The Wheeler Centre uh, loves partnering with the NGV on this series and we're having a lot of fun. We're back next week talking about Ron Muick. Uh, so uh, there are still some tickets left if uh, any of you would like to join us. Uh, a big thank you to the members of the BRAC family who are here tonight. Great to have them uh, here. And uh, we hope that next time you stand in front of this extraordinary piece of work or this extraordinary stretch of Collins Street, you see it a little bit differently. Thank you very much. Thank you.